Behöver du en bil? Mabi hyrbilar finns på över 150 platser i landet och vi har nästan lika många modeller att välja på. Mabi hyrbilar. Hyrbilar som passar dig. For the first time this season, we come across to Europe and we come to the Red Bull Ring as Bonin Svenska E-Racing Ligan's Formula Series is really starting to hot up as we enter the second half of the championship with just three rounds to go. Tonight is rounds 13, 14 and 15 of the series and for it is myself, Cameron Roger, Justin Prince alongside me and Dame Baird on the production of this RaceBot TV broadcast as we come alive to you for the Bolins your Grand Prix around the Red Bull Ring. It's going to be fast, it's going to be frantic and this car should suit this track very well. And of course, we have the possibility of rain, a subject that's been added to the iRacing service. Here is what we've had over the course of the last couple of months. We started back at Road Atlanta before we had a bit of a, an American stretch of Laguna Seca and Virginia, but then we went down under for the uh, Feather Online Gaming Grand Prix just a uh, few weeks ago now. Uh, we had a little bit of a break, but we're back for the final three rounds here at the Red Bull Ring. Then we go to Zanfort and then Oran Park as well, back as we get to the uh, mega final by Svensk E-Racing as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, three races every night. The, uh, the first one, of course, is uh, just by the qualifying. That we'll get to in a few moments' time. Here's how these standings go. Yes, Barrickson leads in the way, and this is uh, taking into uh, account some drop scores as well, and he's got a pretty decent uh, gap there to Marcus Byfeld. Yes, but won all three races back at Phillip Island a few weeks ago, so uh, <laughs> the track was renamed uh, Yes, but Island uh, by quite a few of the drivers in the community, which is just a nice, good one there. Melvin Orkerson is in third place, having a strong season with Fredrickson, Hafflidsson rounding out out to your top five. They have got uh, Kamara, uh, Holmbom, Lenholm, Homer, and Salander. Not too far behind as well. And with three races every uh, evening, there's plenty of opportunity for points to be scored. And of course, with 50 points for a race victory, there's certainly a lot on the line here today. And let's see, of course, how they're going to do when we get towards the qualifying session, because I'm sure the lap times are just in. are going to be fairly close around here. Uh, there's a lot of right-handers. They're all pretty fast corners, though. Um, but there are a few tricky ones as well. Yeah, a race like this one today should allow it decent amounts of opportunities to be able to make some moves down the straightaways, especially that run up from Nicky Lada all the way up to MSAG. That's going to be one of your main places to pass today. But outside of that today, it's a rhythmistic racetrack where you can get alongside, but if you don't complete the pass, like, say, through Roush into turn four or towards Power Horse, you end up having the risk of incidents, but also the risk of losing tons of time around a racetrack like this. You need to get passes done efficiently if you want to make those moves and take advantage of the best places to pass. Yeah, it's definitely a momentum-based track and, of course, is a momentum-based car, this uh, Formula 4 car that we have. And uh, they're very fast in the corners, but not a load of power. So you've got to be getting that run onto the straights and really using every last thousands of a second that you can on the exit of the corner. You see Bifa there using all of the track limits. Currently just one thousandth off. Have listen at the front row as he comes across to start another lap. Actually, no, he goes to the top by three tenths of a second. That's a huge margin. Ericsson comes in behind by a tenth of a second. Then Fredrickson as well, and not too far behind. Have listen dropped down to fourth. Um, but I think we are going to see some very close and competitive races. Racing. Yeah, usually when a race track like this is on the docket, you see a lot of pack groupings together, at least five to six. When you're talking about today's format with the 11 laps apiece and the 14 for the invert, being able to have solid position for a set pack, it's going to be very critical throughout the race today. That invert race may be extremely treacherous for some of the drivers today. That being considered for the first two parts of today's challenge for these competitors, it's about making sure you're up towards the front, around Bifelt, Ericsson and company, 
to be able to keep it clean. We already see the chances of rain throughout today. Well, before the start of the day, it was around 30%. When the session moved to qualifying, guess what? The forecast went down to 1% chance of precipitation. One. <laughs> It's uh, certainly a, a teasing us, I think. There's a, a little bit of a chance. We do have some grey clouds up there. And, of course, still just a, a few weeks into having, um, you know, the rain on the service. I'm sure the drivers will be very, very much looking forward to having some wet races. And I do think by, before now and the end of the season, we will see one or two wet uh, races indeed. As you say, Justin, got a couple of 11 lap races and an invert 14 laps. So well over 30 laps of racing for these guys. As the final couple of laps come in, Len Hong goes up into fourth position. Crook gets himself up inside the top 10 and with just uh, over half a second covering the top nine. Uh, this is certainly looking to be a uh, very close qualifying. A decent lander there up inside the uh, the front three rows just at the end. Um, but will anyone else try and sneak themselves up towards the top? I don't know if they're going to have quite enough time. Of course, just a couple of laps uh, in the session. But for Marcus Byfeld, that is a big move there, uh, putting himself up towards the front in qualifying because he knows that uh, if he can stay at the front and get uh, another race victory this season, then that is going to be what he needs to do to try and catch down Jesper Eriksson. The issue is Jesper has so many race victories already, um, seven compared to uh, to Byfeld's zero this season. Of course, Byfeld's uh, victorious last season. Um, that is really going to help him when we get to the drop scores coming in, even if uh, Byfeld wins many of the races coming between now and the end uh, of the season. Of course, down in fifth place in the championship, we've got Michael Havlidson. He's coming in strong. Um, after a very strong round back of Virginia. Um, but then, unfortunately, he just gets involved in a couple of incidents here and there. And that is why he's a bit lower down in the championship that he would have wanted. But we have nine races still left to go this season. Still plenty of points on offer. And everything can really turn upside down uh, if you start um, going backwards in the race. But here's your grid for the first race of the day that is set by the qualifying. And it is by Ferdinand Eriksson on that front row. Fredrickson and Lenholm make it three fours drivers inside the top two rows. Have Edison and Salander there rounding out the top six. So, so many of the uh, top contenders up there at the front. Uh, Aaron Norman and Melvin Orkeson inside your front four rows with uh, Oliver Wallen and uh, Daniel Holmer there inside your top five rows. Crook and Holmbom round out uh, your top 12 uh, so far. Peter Holmbro there in the 77th in 13th place. Giros, who always manages to have some strong performances in this championship in 14th. Frisk and uh, Olsen there in your top 16 with Junker and Homerin inside your top 18. And we still have a very large and strong field here as the season uh, progresses on. Uh, Allard and Kamara inside your top 20, but we'll let the rest of the grid uh, roll their way down because we'll be getting to the start of the race where we'll see uh, uh, Marcus Byfeld there on the front row. Yes, Ericsson alongside him in the 37 machine. And who is going to get the run up towards the first corner? It's a very fast flick uh, before we work away on towards that back straight and up to the best overtaking opportunity on the track at the hairpin. It's certainly going to be a very uh, challenging race indeed for these drivers. And who is going to get the whole shot? Because that is so, so important uh, to have the track position we know uh, in this championship is the Berlin Zyorba uh, Grand Prix here for rounds 13, 14 and 15 of the championship, the Berlin Svenska e Racing League. And as the lights come on, it is going to be Marcus Byfeld there in the 105 machine from your pole position. And he gets away nicely. Ericsson just slightly bogging down, actually. Not quite the run that he would have wanted up towards the first corner. We stay side by side, but for now, but it's actually going to be uh, Oscar Fredrickson trying to uh, get a bit of a wide line there, but he lets his teammate get the run in. As all there's already been contact and a crash up there towards the front. I think it's uh, uh, Lenholm who's gone around. He's got tagged there coming through turn number one. He's been sent into the barrier. Everyone else looks like they got through that pretty cleanly as the drivers try and work their way through. Now up towards the heavy breaking zone, in towards the heaven. Is there going to be any sends down the inside? Not for the top three. They stay in formation for now. But it's actually going to be Salander there up the inside of half -Liderson. And as all the cars come through the heaven, it looks like it's a clean start for the front. But we keep racing down the hill. And as expected with the runs was of late through Nicky Lada. Contact to start things off. That was after the nose of Woodison, I believe, in that. Seems to be okay himself, though, for the time being, as oh. there's more trouble! Yet again, never mind, there's the nose destroyed this time. 
And that's almost identical to what we saw with Lenholm in the first corner, that front to rear contact spinning around. And once again, we see Havlidison involved in some sort of incident. And that has let the top three get away massively. Aaron Nom now is in fourth place. Melvin Orcus in uh, third place in championship is just in behind him. But two big crashes inside the top 10 already on the first half of a lap here as we get to the first race of the evening. And that is not what we would have wanted because that's completely lost the draft and the top three are going to be battling it themselves for this race win. Exactly what I talked about. Need to get passes done efficiently if you want to be able to take advantage and not lose a lot of time. When both of the incidents inside the top 10 involve the same driver in the same spot to allow the top three drivers of the championship to just run away, there's not much you can say there than, oh, come on. And there they go again. Street Trends drivers around in the background. Two of them. Oh, this is absolute carnage. Three, four drivers getting involved there. And that is the worst place to be right on the exit of the first corner. Multiple drivers making contact there and losing some front wings. I believe I saw at least some damage to some of those cars. One was up in the air for a moment. Um, I've been rolling some actually. One of the drivers involved in the white machines. Is there yeah, someone about a rear wing there? Further uh, in issues happening here. All Contact cars going around. We've got on the AM racing cars as well. Who's back around there at turn number three and this is a little bit uh, more chaotic than we would have wanted to start this race look at the cars all over the places Bifer has lost the lead yes but Ericsson has got past there as he takes the race lead and in behind I think that's Orkson trying to get down the inside of Nom as well in towards the very fast left-hander Roush uh, but also at the front as I said it's the 37 who's taken the lead I think it's important to mention that Lauer was told not to start race one because of causing the big one last time out of Phillip Island. There is that potential possibility, I think, for some of the drivers involved in that big one, Christopher Crook, a team member of that, having some troubles that sparked that big one just now. So there's already potential you'd have to think about in the precedent for what's gonna happen for the points for later on. A good portion of the field, at least four drivers with broken wings from that. But these three, all you can say is, this is going exactly to plan. I qualified well, and I no longer have to deal with the massive one from this spin by Crook in the heart of the pack. Oh, it's actually about six cars directly involved now. Then here's one sending. I think that might have been his teammate over the top there of Crook. And Crook couldn't, couldn't do anything um, after he lost the rear end there and just wait for all of the drivers to see what happened. And that is a nasty uh, incident. So, so many drivers involved now. And actually, a good job from about half of them to try and get past. But then look at the mayhem it caused up the hill. Everyone just backed up into each other. And here comes uh, the further contact uh, up there, the inside, about three wide going through the apex. That's Hafidison with more contact there in the 81 machine. And he has gone around. And that is a very tricky start to the driver who won two races, remember, back at Virginia. Oh, wow, coming into turn one. Over the top goes another one. That is not a nice uh, thing for the Street Chains team. There's a Pedersen there, Lucas Pedersen, uh, one of the drivers in the pit lane right now. Yeah, that was the one I was just starting to note because uh, you had one person in the off. That is even worse than just going out from the runoff. And at this point, I'm thinking if I have a street chance driver behind me, Marcus Beifeld is that one, by the way. Is this going to be the race for all those cars crash? Because essentially, we've already had two of them crash. At least two of them having to come down to the pit lane because of the teammates. Basically, there's a common trait unplanned, and it involves that paint scheme. By felt, gonna have to drive like that doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, yeah, he does, and I think he's doing that. Coming through the kink of turn two, he's holding it to that left-hand side. He's retaking the lead for now, but he's got to finish it under the brakes. And of course, Ericsson has the inside line and should be able to just squeeze him out. This is actually gonna let his teammate Fredrickson get the draft as we might end up three wide coming down the hill towards turn four. It's a Byfeld there on the left-hand side. Then we've got Ericsson alongside him and Fredrickson trying to push his teammate down the inside of turn four. They're gonna go side by side in the braking zone. Byfeld really trying to work hard for this. For about two kilometers now, he's been on the outside of Jesper Ericsson. This will finally turn to the inside as we work away up towards turn six. Is it gonna be enough for him to take the lead because it's a really nice flowing section, really wide to allow side-by-side -side racing. And look at these two giving each other plenty of space. They battle for the lead. And it's gonna be Byfeld still up the inside there trying to hold on. We've gone side-by-side -side for three quarters of a lap now, but yes, Ericsson holds on. The funny thing is I kind of talked about 
the paint scheme trend as a half joke. I didn't mean it literally, but Byfeld's nearly destroying himself across these force machines. That's now contact with both of the drivers in this battle. This lap already, pretty clear Byfeld saying, you know what? I'm going to get the elbows up because I want to get a win. He hasn't had a win this season, and he's been fast enough. The amount of times he's finished second place to Jesper Eriksson, mind you, as well, is, uh, is a bit heartbreaking for him. Even back at Phillip Island, he finished second. Uh, I believe all three races, uh, obviously, uh, Jesper Eriksson winning all three. He knows what that rear wing looks like, but he wants to be ahead of it. Up towards turn three for another time. Huge send down the inside from the 112 machine. Can he make it stick on the apex? No, not quite. But what he's doing is slowing down Bifel onto this straight, getting him further away from Eriksson's draft. And it might not be enough this time around but uh, they have the freedom to battle like this due to the uh, three second gap that they've got in behind them now how long that continues is a big question as Fredrickson just lost a lot of time because he had that slide just now I was about to say the car's not battling one second quicker you see that train in the backdrop your old numb closed up a second last time by of an Alexson moved up a second last time Wallen moved up a second because of how fierce they're driving side by side at all of this, this is doing exactly what I talked about. Allowing the opportunity for everybody else to gain because everybody up front is too busy battling. Both these drivers on screen are just saying, let's ride. Absolutely. And I'm just checking some stats of Byford there. He has finished in the top five every race this season, apart from one. And that is why he's up there. But no race victories. We've got a driver still without a rear wing there. As uh, there's Wallingston going around. And I think, yeah, it was his teammate still going out rear wing. but trying to make it work. Of course, actually, might still be fairly fast around here. Um, such as it being a, a low downforce car. I might get away with the lack of rear wing and the, the gain in the straight line speed. Uh, such as the fast flowing nature um, of the this circuit we come back to this battle for fourth place we've got Auxon defending there to the inside Oliver Wallen comes to the outside line and tries to find his way uh, to do something but it's very difficult around the outside here it definitely is a pro you know the primary position to be on that inside line and he certainly has to back up but what he's done is he's pulled um, Auxon there away from none we come down the hill in towards turn four is a massive downhill in towards the breaking zone Wallen dives it up the inside for the second corner in a row but he doesn't break late enough and he actually makes a bit of a wiggle there was their contact are they still going yeah Wallen's gone off the screen he must have spun around he was coming in a bit hot there wiggling under the brakes and unfortunately he's going to drop down three four maybe even a fifth position yeah the first thought as soon as i seen him send it up the inside through round to the backdrop was no no it's not going to stick because send it a little bit deep on the brakes you see a bit already coming out from the slide in the midst of it Try to peek to the inside, started to hop through the wheels and through the brakes, spun him around. Other drivers are still struggling with the Nicky Lauda, as to be expected, though. That is a very difficult section for spins. At the same time, you have this battle I was talking about. Watch. You have the opportunity to open up inside, but you have to get it just right if you're going to take away that momentum because you need the outside to make the move fully work. The pinch off. Problem is, right about here, he wheel hops a touch, gets him loose into the side pod and off and away goes Wallen. Yeah, he, uh, he didn't commit enough on the brakes and then it just got a little bit awkward and what basically just ran out of room and it now needs to come again. So this is Lenholm ahead. So Lenholm, who spun, you know, spun around at turn one there, is actually done pretty decent to get back up into a place look at the huge gaps are uh, coming in behind as well as all of these issues have really spread out uh that midfield quite a little bit so a load of drivers in the pit lane as you see there i'm um, having uh having seen these issues but the top two continue their battle Fredrickson hasn't been able to keep up um, after the small gap that it was made he's obviously lost the draft now as well so he's going to be dropping back and it is a one two battle with the two drivers who pretty much are going to be finishing one two on average uh, in more races uh, and then you would expect in this series back to uh, halfway through last season where I felt joined the championship it's just been him and Ericsson batting out pretty much uh, for most of the races. And here is another one up towards the final couple of corners. But no, Byfeld is lifting off and he's waiting. He's biding his time for the perfect time to make that overtake. Yeah, and now I think they're kind of taking a page out of what they noticed on the intervals, or at least Byfeld is. Okay, if we keep on fighting, Nauman Company comes back into the battle. Now that they stop battling, and not because I think 
they ditch Fredrickson in this because he lost time because of a checkup. I think at this point, these two just want to work together or at least cooperation for the next couple laps. Make it the two-car battle. Take Fredrickson out of the equation. Make it man on oh man. And it looks like Byfeld's kind of signaling that. If he's not going side by side right now, he's pretty much saying, if we go side by side, Nutman Erickson's back in it. Let's wait until the right moment. Absolutely. And talking of that, I think Nums lost the position. Orkson down the inside there for P4. Has he been able to hold on to position? I don't quite think in the background. No, he hasn't been able to hold on. So he did go for a bit of a send. There wasn't enough to make that move. And uh, Aaron Nam, who came into this championship and uh, as a little bit of an unknown as such, but is doing such a good job and really improving as the races go on. Just another um, uh, showing here of his good performance. But Byford, I think this is a bit. Do you remember back in the day of uh, of Mar Marquez with uh, with Pedroza and uh, no, sorry, not Pedroza, Davizioso, I should say. At uh, tracks like this, where they would always wait. When we got to this stage with a few laps ago, they'd always wait, and then maybe one or two laps ago, that is when they'd just pull the trigger and they would start fighting and start batting because you you don't want to overtake too early because especially around a track like this, you can just be slipstream back uh, fairly easily. Exactly. You hit it right on the head because I think Byfeld already knows with the fact he read side by side for a full lap cam. If he tries to make the move and he doesn't immediately clear, chance for the draft to go right on back. You take away the chance for response. It makes it less opportune to make your own response, you can argue, absolutely. But in this type of a sequence, you have to find the right time. It looks like Byfeld saying, Let's try this. I don't think it's going to work as well on the outside, though, unless he can pinch here. Yeah, two and a half laps to go, and he's trying it around the outside of turn three. Does he have the momentum, though? Ericsson, of course, has that inside line, which is all important. As he come down the hill, he's actually got his nose just ahead, but it's a long, long way, a bit of side drafting going on, trying to find their way in towards the braking zone. How much is Ericsson going to fight this? It looks like quite a lot up the inside line there, but he's going to make Bifar go the long way around. Remember, we've seen this already. It's a picture, a carbon copy of what we saw about five laps ago. Are they going to continue on through the middle sector this time no Ericsson backs out of that he lets Byfeld retake the lead as he had at the start of the race from that pole position now Ericsson needs to find his way back through and that actually based on the pattern logic might work out well because if it works into Byfeld's favor Ericsson responds lap 10 and then there's a swap back on the final lap I think that's what Byfeld's kind of tricking Ericsson into if Ericsson just waits a lap and then goes for it on the final lap, that's where it could get interesting because that's where the chess match is starting to really come into play here. Do you follow what Byfeld wants you to try or do you just wait for the final lap and try and see if you can make it work then? But again, it's if you wait to that last lap, is then you only have one opportunity. Whereas if he goes it for it this lap, he at least has two. Let's see how this works. It's a, a picture of what we saw last time. Just flipped around the other way. Byfeld on the inside. Ericsson on the outside in towards the braking zone, up towards the hairpin. Ericsson goes the long way around. They give each other space once more. Amazing battling between these two this season. And it continues on here for the first race of the evening. The Bonin's here. Yorba uh, Grand Prix down the hill we go. And let's see. Yes, he comes across to the right-hand side. He covers him off. He gets the inside line which is all important and Byfeld doesn't bat battle that one back he knows that position is lost but you're right Justin is this putting him in the prime opportunity to now make this on the final lap or does he not want to wait around the outside it's going to be now no he lets Ericsson have that once more once again you mentioned how there's two chances instead of just one chance in the final lap this is right into the hands of Byfeld right now he's now going to have the chance to be on the offensive Ericsson forced defensive we already seen last time Byfeld was able to make the pass because he was able to keep it alongside for turn five now he's in the prime position to do the same thing yet again with no chance for Ericsson to respond unless Ericsson can force a mistake in the midst of that pass attempt coming up as they get the white flag this time this is going to be an interesting one. It's a game of cat and mouse. Byfeld has finished second to Jesper Eriksson a few too many times for his liking. And as we come on to the final lap, the first race of the evening, Jesper Eriksson is looking strong. Oh, no, they got a driver coming out of the pit lane as well. Is that going to get involved on this final lap? A huge battle between the championship contenders. They're one or two on track, one and two in the championship as well. Is it going to be this corner? Let's see how this one works out. And it's a street trends driver as well as Byfeld goes to the outside 
outside line in the 105 machine. He's just got the curb on the outside line as he tries to hold it. But Ericsson once more has the inside like he did on the previous lap as he cut across the nose. Byfeld hasn't got enough to do that this time around in towards the braking zone. They're squeezing each other to the left-hand side of the track. Yes, but Ericsson dives it late on the brakes and he's going to try and squeeze him wide. No contact between the two and Byfeld has made it through as he takes the front with half a lap to go as yes, Ericsson made a small mistake there because he's lost a good car length on the exit, wasn't able to put the power down as he would have wanted. And now Byfeld is trying to run away. Just one more left-hander and then two rights to go to finish this lap. And the, of course, the race, he started on pole position, but he's had to work for it up towards the final two corners now. And Byfeld is really showing his pace by four tenths of a second. He's pulled away. Yes, Ericsson isn't going to have enough to overtake in these final two corners. So Byfeld just needs to hit this final apex well. Do not chunk the curve. Do not spin it now. And he doesn't do so. So he comes out the final corner and he takes the first race victory, but not without an amazing battle there. Yes, Ericsson, who finishes just in behind. But it is the Street Trends driver who takes victory. Exactly what I talked about. Byfeld tried to play the numbers game, the strategy game. Knew that with the choice of the lap, he'd have more opportunities to pass if Ericsson wanted to make the pass with two laps to go. And because of that thought process of if gap car, Byfeld had played the numbers game perfectly, Cameron, to where he had more chances on the attack and for the final lap, exactly what he needed to do and what he wanted to be in position to do if he wanted to win this race. It was uh, an amazing battle between those two and I can't wait to see how we go for the second race of the night because of course that's going to come up in just a few short seconds time not uh, a big turnaround here and I think what uh, Byfeld is going to do is try and play the mind games once more but are there going to be further uh, people involved this time around of course the top three had a bit of a breakaway then they lost Fredrickson halfway through so I do wonder if we're going to see um, yeah, some more people getting involved. But what a battle it is between these two drivers. Some great drivers in this championship. And hopefully uh, they continue that on because race two will be the grid uh, uh, and the result that we just saw. So it is pretty much going to be a, a stop and starter, a mid-stage break, uh, if you call it like that. But Justin... What would you do if you're in Byfeldt's position? Well, actually, we'll get that into a second. We'll just go through the results first. As Byfeldt, of course, took victory. And then Jesper Eriksson in second place. Fredrickson in third. Then we got Nom Orkson, Lenholm, uh, your top six. Homer, Holmbomb, Oliver Wallen down in P9. And then Salander rounding out your top 10. With Fredrickson getting the fastest lap on the third lap, of course, of all that draft that he had. Helmbro, uh, Nylander, Schott, Kamara, uh, Giros, Ullmann, uh, Brostrom, Ericsson, Wallingstrom, and uh, Bjorn Brostrom rounding out to your top 10. Uh, but look at that, actually the gaps really opening up. It was a bit of carnage in that midfield. Then Lundberg, Frisk, Loden, and Nepton, the final drivers on the lead lap before all these drivers who had issues. Havlidsen, Jorka, um, Pedersen, Motin, uh, Homer in and Honor inside your top 30. But of course, some of these drivers are DNFing many, many laps ago. And just a couple of other drivers of Olsen, Crook and Allard. Unfortunately, Allard there DNFing on that first lap. But Justin, what would you do if you're Byfeld this time around or Ericsson? Would you attack it, the race differently? Or is it just uh, how, the, uh, how the cookie crumbles in that battle? I think in terms of that, you want to be second coming to the last lap as some have talked about on the drafting tracks for a reason. It puts you on the offensive. If you're able to make a move like we just seen on the outside, stick it to the outside, coming through turn three, keep it outside by turn five, you're in a prime position. That's exactly what Byfeld was able to do with the pinch. Now, in regards to what it would change if I'm Erickson, basically try and inverse that. Know that if Byfeld's going for a pass with three to go, He's going to try and set it up where he's the one on the offensive with a lap to go and so forth. You have to keep an eye on the lap. You have to keep an eye on the mind game. You have to be able to keep everything in mind because a lot of these drivers up front calculate this to the very move like we just see. Absolutely. And they line up once more in the same positions again. And especially for the uh, for the top two there, um, they are basically in their exact same positions. Will they be in the same when we have another 11 laps racing as we hit the second race of the evening? Round 14, the bonus fence get E-Racing Ligans Formula Series and we get underway. Already issues in the midfield there. One of the drivers not quite getting away. It looks like everyone's got around them very nicely. Uh, in towards turn one we go and Byfeld holds onto the front. But we do see also their nom uh, sending it up the inside. Might be losing out that fourth position 
position. Another car going off wide, but I think everyone else has got through. No big crashes this time around as we come up the hill. Is there going to be any huge sends or is there going to be just a little bit of calm uh, compared to what we saw in that first race? In towards the break-ins, it looks like the top four have stayed all in the same formation, but in behind, they're trying to make a few moves up the inside there. I think everyone is looking very nice at the moment. Three wide for a moment as Wallingston maybe is involved in that one. As you come out up the hill, it looks all good. Looks very good, actually, especially, again, though, top three able to run away. The mid-pack not imploding, though. So I think people will say that's a plus. Here's that top three, though. Fredrickson with that good start. Going to see if there's anything that machine can do because... We've seen Fredrickson wasn't as good on the long run once he made a mistake in the Roush. He was losing time ever since that point around midway. Right now, Erickson, I think if you're him, you're just saying, I just want to stay top three. Keep scoring top fives. That's what's going to win you a championship. Yeah, he in pretty much all of the races, well, no all of races he's finished first and second apart from the one reverse grid in Virginia when it was a little bit of carnage he finished P10 um, and then of course the race that he DNF back at Laguna Seca apart from that he's finished P1 and 2 and look at the exit off the final corner there as actually is that slow down penalty it must be uh, for the top two as they both uh, sorry slow down and unfortunately that is Byfelt losing out to is that three four fours cars he's going to lose out for and that is a, a huge moment potentially in this championship as we're going to see the 112 uh, go up towards the front there and Byfeld has a lot of work to do now with all these cars around it. Yeah, this really changes it up a little bit and that's one of the major things right about this racetrack. You need to be very careful on track limits, especially through that final sector. You end up going even across the red and white paint. That's an automatic coral black flag essentially. You have to sacrifice a couple seconds because it's known as a way to essentially gain a lot of time on the racetrack. I think for Ericsson, this is the prime chance, but the draft is still going to be helpful for some. Errol Numb already having a battle with Byfeld because of where that car cycled. And this is very tense because he knows that he needs to get through these positions as quickly as possible. But then he also doesn't want to battle too much. As you mentioned before, that is how the gaps really open up at a racetrack like this. So this is going to be uh, another race, unfortunately, where Byford is going to lose points to Ericsson. It just depends how many. Is he going to make a move in towards the penultimate corner? It's uh, certainly not one that you always want to do. But in the background, I think it's Dan Homer trying to defend as that is not always the, the best corner to overtake him. But you can certainly try it as you have the long run up there. And as you come across the line, it's Jesper Eriksson leading from three of his teammates. And that's the key word. Teammates are the drivers that it can really work with here. Again, if anything, Eriksson doesn't really have to panic at all because of that non-slowdown compared to everyone else in his pack. I still think that his teammates are going to catch him pretty soon. It's just they need to just gain a couple tenths. Then they're golden. Unfortunately for some of them, they're saying, you know what? We're teammates, but also we like to battle. And here comes Harold Numb to nearly eat up the back wings of these cars. Yeah, I think Lenholm didn't want to wait around for the uh, the 078 machine, and he just slides past the teammate of Melvin Orkerson there, as it is, of course, a bit of a, a train um, down this back straight as everyone's getting the slipstream on the cars ahead. Norm, interesting line there, sort of half defending, half attacking almost, uh, breaking very late, manages to uh, get it stopped. We're really trying to hold on in front of Byfeld there, who stays in that position for now. Uh, unfortunately, down in uh, sixth place. And oh, we're going to see another spin. Oh, that is almost identical to what we saw this Horner. It's gone around, but fortunately, um, no cars uh, coming. Is already slightly at the back of the field and no replay of what we saw. But Crook has more issues with the rear end of the car. It's at turn one in the previous lap and uh, is coming there through turn seven this time around. Uh, maybe not just having the, the, the balance in the car that he would have wanted. And then they have Slander, who is seen there as, yet again, it's the attack of the Street Trends cars, and why not hit them on the way back to the rejoin? Ooh. And my goodness, that is, you've got to keep your eyes open. I think that might have been Han, who just flew in there near full throttle. And that was... Uh 
uh, yeah, definitely a squeaky bum time as they slammed on the brakes to avoid the some major contacts. But loads of replays here as we're seeing all of the incidents that happened a little bit further back. And you're going to see that, unfortunately, yeah, a couple of teammates uh, getting involved. And then the further contact that happened from that with Nylander, um, of course, uh, they're just losing um, some time, some damage from that one uh, as well. It certainly is it's hard when you have over 30 cars all batting for places and 35 cars get points as well. So everyone's battling for points, really, and they just start going for all these uh, positions. Slow down yet again for Marcus Byfeld. Things have not been looking good in that heart of the pack, by the way. Well, there is a good reason, though, because you may notice that the pack is kind of gone, is it not, Cam? Because I'm pretty certain a certain 105 may have been in it. And yeah, this is not good. Oh, certainly not. So Orkson and Nom was down the inside there. And another drive might be been actually Marcus Byfeld was um, at least uh, in and amongst that, but I think he got through nicely. And unfortunately that, as you say, has broken up this train. And let's see this once more. More Street Trends drivers going around. That, that was just on the back of the battle that we saw um, a little bit earlier and uh, managed to get uh, back in a, in a straight line. What is going on in, in the midfield today? Everyone is feeling it. Yeah, so there's auction up the inside, making contact uh, with Nom, and uh, fortunately just avoiding all the cars behind, but talking of avoiding, uh -oh. Uh, oh, huge contact once more. Driver just sliding all over the track. Yeah, the tough thing about the rejoin coming up from the outside in that section is you're just having to rejoin from the midst of a spin like that into the racing line. For most drivers, they're not seeing that as we've seen today on that outside of the racetrack. And we've seen all of those being separate incidents, having essentially three or four of them being near identical of what happened to them. You've got to keep an eye on the incident box. Apparently, those four you just seen were at the exact same time. Welcome to Austria, where things go crazy. <laughs> Yeah, there's, uh, it might be sort of quite a short track with a lot of straights, but the corners do come at you thick and fast, and it's certainly a good opportunity to make those overtakes. And it seems like, as you say, every single corner, people are trying things, and it really just opens up and it invites you, this track, to dive down the inside of certain corners, because it is actually quite a wide track, but it then just tightens up on every single one of these apexes. And unfortunately, we're seeing quite a few issues in this race. However, the top 10 are staying fairly close to bonus. Uh, still nine seconds, just covering them so far. So, um, yeah, not too big a gap. So we are seeing these little two by two, three by three trains um, that are forming four positions. But towards the front, Ericsson is leading fairly comfortably, though, from his teammate Lenholm, who was around at the first corner of the first race. But now he's up in P2. And we haven't even had the reverse grid race. So that is all from overtakes. And we've always seen Lenholm do good in the invert race, especially. So I think it's not a surprise to see the speed there. It's just a matter, though, of because there's no one to work with in the draft, that just puts it down to raw pace. And as we both know, Jesper Eriksson is very difficult to beat on raw pace on a racetrack like this, let alone all throughout the season. This is all playing out perfectly for the 37 yet again, even though most of his teammates are absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Yes, yeah, uh, it is funny how uh, it works out with the teammates um, in certain races. But we do see some fairly big teams in this uh, in this championship. And of course, even with uh, 33 cars, um, there's a lot of teams, but some of them have three, four drivers uh, in each of them. There's uh, Cedric Hombom and the number 10 machine. Uh, very fast driver, of course, one of the, uh, the younger, if not the youngest driver on the field, but still very fast up there in that fifth place and trying to hold on to the back of Dan Homer, who's just slightly uh, getting away. Um, but he is it within that one second, so he's still getting a bit of the draft. But those uh, lovely pink rims are certainly showing well as we're halfway through this second race. So basically halfway through the evening. But remember, the top 20 from this result get inverted for that final race. I mean, I will say the only thing said over the in sim radio or in the text chat from home bum this entire session is Lucy Goosey, Jesper Eriksson. So I'm guessing he's Lucy Goosey or Jesper Eriksson's Lucy Goosey. For Michael Hoflison, I think it's more so the factor of, will any race cars land on top of me? After all, 25th to 8th, this seems like the full Michael Hoflison experience, except for the fact he hasn't had an incident yet this one. Uh, uh, not yet. 
but uh, he made up for it having two in the previous race, so it sort of averages out, I guess. Um, yeah, the 81 machine is fast, um, but as we have been saying, maybe not the most consistent in terms of the results for various issues, as there's the 42 Anton Norman having some problems. Uh, coming up the straight, did he have a, a spin or something going on as one driver pulls off to the right-hand side and uh, goes back to pits? Yes, he has. For it, turn one, he's been uh, spun around there. Car on his inside and manages to get going very, very nicely. But of course, uh, lost quite a bit of time with that. Yeah, and Ullman's more solid on, on the ovals than he is on the road courses, I've noticed throughout his times in this series. But he can run it well when... He's able to keep the car to grips, and from what we've seen today, it's hard to keep the grips underneath many of these competitors because the track, even though it's very cool, usually that also means higher track speeds in terms of the laps themselves and how much speed in the motor in turn. A lot of these drivers just can't get it to grip up, it seems. It is massively loose regardless. Difficult one as well, and of course, fixed setup, so not much that they can do in that regard. It's all about the feel of the driver, and in some ways, people say, you know, fixed setup brings everyone closer, but in some ways, it's the opposite because if you don't get the feel in the car, you can't change it to your liking. So, certainly a, a, an interesting one as we're seeing Dan Holmer having the, his best race uh, of the season so far. Um, he's got P6. Um, a couple of times back at Laguna Seca, but now he's running up in P4 and he's looking at a podium if he can get Fredrickson there for P3. He was getting a bit close, unfortunately, just losing a few car lengths so far, but certainly looking very strong in the orange and green machine. Yeah, pretty solid to be able to get through all the craziness. Again, Homer, I put towards one of the, from what I've seen over his career, he's more solid at times on the oval side. But today, again, had a good recover, drive through, gained a few spots each race so far, and in turn has a chance for at least the top five in this one. That's kind of all he needs to do here. He has a good chance with Fredrickson just not being good at the back end of these races to be able to at least get a podium. Yeah, it's, uh, it takes a lot of racecraft and it takes a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of guts to get past a lot, of, a lot of these drivers as well in the races. But sometimes you do just have to keep it clean and just slide through drivers one by one and work your way through methodically. And of course, maybe you're not going to not going to win if you don't get the overtakes done quickly. But at least you have a clean race and a solid result. And that's what's working out very, very nicely as we go on to lap nine. So three laps remaining, including this one. We've got Lenholm trying to chase that Ericsson. But unfortunately, Ericsson, uh, unfortunately for Lenholm, Ericsson is leading by two and a half seconds. Then we have three seconds back to this battle between Fredrickson and Homer. And then we have a huge trade in behind Hombo and Helmbro and uh, Nom. And they also have Vincent on the back of it. So a four car battle as we come up towards turn number three. We're going three wide in towards the breaking zone. Here are Nom on the inside. We've got Helmbro on the outside as that is going to be contact for surely. Yes, it is between the two. Actually, look who's come up the inside. Have Vincent. He's gone past the three of them as he makes a nice easy overtake. They're all worried about each other. And Have Vincent goes up and he's certainly going to be relieved with that one. Didn't really have to do too much. In the background, Helmbro though. He's trying to battle, break down the inside, but he's got to be careful because Havlinson's there. Oh no, contact is made, and he spins in front of Eero Nom as well. So Havlinson actually gets a bit of luck that time around, but unfortunately for Nom, he gets collected with Helmbro breaking too late. I mean, the hand raised reactions, kind of like the reaction of every single person in the past sector, because it's like, well, first of all, obviously the spins because you have no front wing down force left for a home bomb. But second, what were you expecting? It was a game of chicken in the, the corner in the first place. And then you have a flea like, thanks for the free spots. Everybody has the other spin here. Then everyone says, let's go three wide again because it worked so well the last time. What <laughs> else are you expecting? Yeah, I, I don't know. And it's... It happens quite a few times because these situations come up very fast and you see the gap and you go down the inside, but unfortunately the gaps close just as quickly as they open. And uh, talking of gaps opening up, Ericsson has extended that lead by another couple of tenths on the previous lap as he starts to pull away a little bit more from his teammate with one and a half laps to go. Uh, but certainly just in this... Uh, it's a tricky championship, is it? This uh, Bernie Svenska e-racing against Formula Series. Of course, it's the second one in a row for the road course part of this uh, league that we have. We had the other one just before Christmas that Ericsson won the championship of. But both of them showing it's very, very difficult when you're in these battles. Extremely difficult, especially when you have 
I think the counter for cars that have flown out over our cars is somewhere around three or four nearly at this point. But for drivers like Ericsson, it's been cruise control, stay in the lead group, hasn't been outside the top three the entire day. It could be absolutely perfect when it comes to Eric and Ericsson's drive, you can describe. If anything, he's probably more so happy with how this is going for his team because it's a team one, two, three coming to the white flag and it looks pretty secure. It certainly, certainly does. I don't think Holm is quite close enough. He's dropped to the back of Fredrickson after having half a look. A couple laps to go. The white flag comes out. It's Z Sports 1, 2, 3, and it is their main man over the course of the last six months or so. Jesper Eriksson, of course, champion in the previous F4 uh, series, of course, leading this one and leading the Oval Series as we get into the playoffs, which will come back next week, remember, uh, at Richmond. But... They're focused on the F4s tonight, and it's certainly working out very nicely for the 37. Extremely nicely. He's been consistent all throughout this one. Even looking at the times when he's been in the draft, he's been even quicker by a couple tenths, but it hasn't really mattered. When you're on raw pace, about three, four tenths quicker than everybody else, you're not going to be easy to stop. And for Erickson, there's a reason he's won so many times having raw pace on top of being good in the draft makes you a very dangerous driver to beat. And the, the stats just help him so much, as you say. He just ticks off all the boxes. And this is going to be another race victory this season. It'll be the eighth one uh, that he's got so far out of 14 races. So over half of the races this season that he has won. And the lowest place that he's finished in a regular race is 10th. But that was only once. The rest of them were first and second. <clears throat> and what a race he has had over the course of the last 22 laps. Finishing second just behind uh, by far last time. But this time he comes out victorious and he will win the second race of the evening in the Berlin Zee Grand Prix. Uh, goes to Jesper Eriksson, the 37. A nice, comfortable victory. That will certainly help his points tally as he goes for a second championship in a row in the former series. And he's joined on the podium with his teammates, Ivan Lenholm and Oscar Fredriksson, as Dan Homer just not quite fast enough to get onto the podium, but still his best result of the season so far in that fourth place. Yeah, a lot of solid drives as a whole when you describe it, even with all the chaos. But for Eriksson... It's going all according to plan, you can argue, with only a few rounds to go. Nothing better than dominating a race like this. Absolutely. We've got one more race to go. Top 20 will be reversed and we'll get that grid to you and the results of this after some messages from our partners. finns på över 150 platser i landet och vi har nästan lika många modeller att välja på. Mobi hyrbilar. Hyrbilar som passar dig.
And welcome back to the Red Bull Ring as we go racing for one final time uh, this evening where we get to the invert grid race and 14 more laps of action here for the Bonus Fenska E-Racing League's Formula Series. But of course, we need to see how it is going to be inverted. The top 20 here will be inverted. So it'll be Jesper Eriksson after winning the second race of Ivan uh, Lenholm in second place. Fredrickson, Holmer and Havlinson inside your top five. Non Bifelt, Wallen, Kamara, and Neptune rounding out your top 10 for Jesper Eriksson getting the fastest lap on the final lap of the race. Frisk shot, uh, Brostrom, Holmerins, uh, uh, Nilander, uh, Loden, Orkerson, Motin, uh, Pettersson inside your top 19. And then reverse grid pole will go to Eric Lundberg there. Uh, so it'll be a Street Trends 1 2 as these top 20 will be inverted these drivers will be, fin will be starting in the same place that they finished with allard uh Ullman, brostrom horner uh wanting some crook helmbro holmbom yonker and uh, olsen inside your top 30 and then the final couple of drivers of salander ericsson and giros will be starting from the back couple of rows as they try and work their way forward through the final race of 14 laps here for the for the abonins yorker uh, Grand Prix and it's certainly going to be a very tricky one uh, Justin to try and get all those places up we've seen a lot of moves so far but there's been a lot of incidents as well when people have tried it yeah that's just down to again passing to an art form around here you have to get it done cleanly and we've seen many times one of the best ways to be able to get the job done is being able to force someone out of the gas Here's the tough part about that. Not everybody likes to get pinched out off the racetrack. So you have to remember, people are not robots. It's not like AI that's going to allow you to do that. These drivers are going to fight you for these positions. And that's what makes it so difficult to get the clean passes, I think, today, is so many of those drivers are trying to keep it pinched out. And others are saying, I'm going to keep my foot in it on already a low-grip racetrack. Oh, by the way, the Sims already moved on to the next day. 0% chance of rain. It is gr currently looking like we'll have full rain maybe next time. <laughs> I can't wait for that. We go to Zanvor uh, next time out in a couple of weeks' time. Of course, we alternate with the Oval Series, so we'll be back uh, for the uh, the Oval Rounds and the final uh, stage of the Round of 15 in the playoffs at Richmond. And then a week after that, we return to F4 action and we go to Zanvo. And as you say, it looks like we might be getting some rain there. So how is that going to work out at Zanvo, do you think, with a, a full chance of rain? I mean, I know it's early to talk about the thoughts for next round in terms of the rain, in terms of the banking that comes to mind. I think drivers will be all right, but I think it will be carnage because, well... Have you ever driven in the rain and hydroplaned under brakes in a full torrential downpour? I can 100% see a lot of the drivers just hydroplane into the sand trap. <laughs> and there's certainly plenty of uh, sand there indeed. Although we'll just uh, turn our attention back to the Red Ring for a moment, uh, Justin. And I wonder how many places, I mean, we always have to guess how many places is Jess Berrickson going to get from P20? It was only up to P10 back at Virginia, uh, but he's, of course, won at uh, Phillip Island uh, two weeks ago. Well, we already seen Michael Fuddison go from 25th to 5th in the last race, so subtract the five, at least top five, if not the race lead. But it all depends with the invert. Can you get through the carnage? Because we've already talked about the passing part. Track temperature is going to be a lot hotter this time. So you don't have to worry about cold tires, Cameron. You have to talk about a hot racetrack with little grip instead. And high speeds. This is about to get wild. Certainly is. Loads of street trends drivers. They've had a few issues, but they're on the front row. Lundberg and Pedersen, that is. Moten and Orkerson uh, rounding out your top two rows. Remember, Orkerson is uh, uh, third place in the championship coming into this uh, evening. Loden and Nylander, after all the issues, <laughs> four street trends drivers inside the top three rows. And they're going to be having the opportunity to get loads of points. But of course, they need to hold on to these positions. Holmerin and Brostrom in behind. Then Hawkins shot. Frisk, Nepton and Kamara rounding out your top 12 in front six rows and we got a uh, wallen by nom have to listen homer and Fredrickson inside your top 18 in the final inverted places of lenholm and ericsson allard ullman brostrom and uh, horner inside your top 24 
And then we've got uh, Wellington, Crook, Helmbro, Holmbaum, Yonker, and Olsen inside your top 30. And then the final uh, few drivers at the back are Solander, Ericsson, and Giros, who will be having to do all of the hard work to get up into the uh, top and high scoring positions. But everyone does get points. So every single position matters. And that is why we're seeing these, uh, yeah, these battles being so, so uh, heavily fought. And you can see why. So we've got the 18 on pole, the 51 alongside and it is not the normal street turn driver that we see of Marcus Byfelt, um, of course, who's normally on the front row. He had the pole position for both races so far, but the 105 machine is down in 14th place. You can see him um, on the uh, left-hand side, about halfway down the screen, as he's going to have a lot of work to do. We did get a bit of a staller on the grid in the previous race. Hopefully, everyone can get off the grid uh, rather nicely this time around, but it's certainly going to be an interesting race as we try and see the championship contenders work their way back through try and get those points or are they going to uh, lose some more to their rivals it may be a bit of a lead for Jesper Eriksson but in behind it is certainly very close as the lights come on for one final time this evening as we go racing for 14 laps here at the Red Bull ring for round 15 of the championship and is a bit of a, a slow launch from the front row actually and through the middle it's going to be Moting can he get up towards the race lead already he's three wide in towards the braking zone and he's looking up the inside but he has to back out of that one so Lundberg holds on as there's contact already as I think is Nylander who gets spun around and have all the drivers been able to avoid him I think they might have just been able to do so but that's a tricky situation uh, when one of the drivers at the front of the pack gets spun around but up towards turn three this time around Moten is still looking up the inside the 94 machine is trying to take the race lead away from the 80 machine but Lundberg holds it on the outside line I'm surprised we made it this far with how things are going three four wide nearly in the heart of the pack you have to be smart, have to think about what's going to happen in front of you. Drivers like Frederick can say, who needs to think when I can go 4-3 wide on the outside in corners that we've already had crashes for? Someone just got spun for the main group. At least one of the street trends cars is in the sand trap as uh, Auxon has taken the race lead from Motin. So I think Lundberg has gone. So maybe he and Motin had some contact there down in towards turn number four. And it looks like it definitely is uh, Lundberg there who's struggling to get back up. We're getting more contact there coming through turn six in the background as there is the 81 machine of Hav Lidderson trying to work his way back up for the second race in a row after being involved in the inverted grid, having to do it all over again and looking pretty nice up there in P11 so far. But these drivers, they really go for every single gap on his have listen going to be able to hold on to that uh in towards the final couple of corners the car wiggling all over the road but just about having that done with homer in behind him on the bright side he apologized to homer in terms of near contact now and giving him a slowdown so why not apologize well if you don't apologize you have upset drivers a lot of these drivers are saying who needs patience when i can just spin the car into the grass a can shot takes the drs boards with them Oh, and that is uh, a bit of a shame because he was looking to be in a pretty decent uh, position up towards the front. But unfortunately, that has not worked out. It's to the front now. It is Melvin Orkerson, but we go back to the mid-pack where there's potentially going to be further contact here as they work their way through turn three. Havlison was involved as the cars in behind on the bright esports uh, cars trying to uh, uh, yeah, work his way around. It might have actually been Linus Brewstrom uh, trying to uh, do something there in the midfield. We go two by two by two in towards the braking zone here at turn four as all the the drivers still trying to find their position as everyone is uh, still trying to get their place on the track and coming out of turn four now uh, that is Dan Homer three wide coming through the very fast corner of turn five easy flat out in these machines and they just keep on going for these positions yeah and you're talking about drivers full on drifting Omen just about drifted three lanes in front of this paddle in front a lot of these drivers don't have front grip and they're still on cold tires, mind you. We're only about lap in the third, lap and three quarters through in some of these cases. These cars just aren't gripping up. Like, take a look at the start. When you have sequences like this for Timmy Nylander, you think big one coming. Thankfully, no one else hit him. The race leaders, though, add to the counter. Ooh. Uh, it, hmm, that was an interesting one from that angle. It looked like... Um, yeah, Lundberg almost went slightly deep 
was the um, was the uh, who's that uh, the 94 of the Moten on the outside was he just turning in a, a little bit or was that just because Lundberg was slightly uh, too late into that corner and then in the background Crook third race in a row having issues on the first lap at different corners each time but he's certainly going to have a bit of a frust uh, frustrated evening I'm sure as unfortunately, uh, yeah, just uh, spinning around. And then there was a couple of other drivers involved there as well, one of the fours drivers as well, as they tried to work their way through. Dennis Hawkins shot there going around. But fortunately, for both of these issues that we see at turn one in this race, um, they all went to the inside and avoided all the other cars. Yeah, these crashes are just building up, by the way. There's been at least three more since we started showing replays. Uh, as Robert Erickson's tough day continues for obvious contact there, but... He also throws the miss to Oscar Fredrickson just as we were still showing some of this. Came up in a meet contact with Lucas Pedersen, and he now drops the field. Carnage, everyone's favorite TV show, right now here on Race Spot. <laughs> that is the uh, the only way to describe the uh, the three races in terms of the uh, the probably the opening five laps of each of the three races have just been um, absolute chaos and carnage. And uh, I mean, it's to be expected in this uh, style of racing. Uh, but certainly, he's also been uh, a, a little bit too much uh, potentially for tonight. As we come back to live pictures, so we've got Augustin Motin uh, for P1 and 2. Byfeld has got himself up into third place and just in behind. Look at this three wide battle we're seeing. So we've got Loden, Wallen, and Nom going three wide. It's Nom in the middle. Can he try and find and squeeze his way past? He's made one position there on Wallen. Can he find that second place on the inside of Loden in towards turn three? I think he has. That's two overtakes as Wallen finds his way through. So Loden going down two places, just showing you how easy it can be to lose places in this championship. Yeah, in that case, Errol now just saying, I've got better speed, even with the preferred line, able to make it stick in terms of the exit, be able to clear before the pinch off by the straightaway. There is a lot building up, to say the very least. By the way, Michael Foodison is also out of the race because of contact with Lenholm, we can tell you. From what we're hearing, he was definitely not happy in that Zoom call. I'm guessing a lot more than hand racing previous. Yeah, watch this. Yeah, if anything, that's a bit on him. And apparently it's like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Bye. Oh, I see. Yes, um, it looks like he, yeah, a bit of a decision um, to DNF. But of course, you can understand the frustration with all of the issues that was um, yeah coming to that 81 machine tonight. Then Ehrman has some contact goes around at P at uh, turn six. Uh, as you know, wasn't as you know, wasn't contact. I think he just went around himself, losing that rear end. I'm um, certainly very close to the Ford's car on the outside, but actually, I don't think there was contact from that angle. So the 42 will continue on a little bit further down as we're on to lap five of 14. So third of the way through the race. And Augustin is leading and pulling away from Motin. And he's looking very strong. Although Motin was, uh, actually no, Motin was slow on the, on the previous lap by three tenths of a second. Yeah, this is to where it's like, okay, there's so much carnage here that eventually you have Ooh. to remember. Oh, speaking of that, I'm guessing something just happened. Yeah, loading, I think it was, uh, went around. I just saw in the background of shot, and it is. So, unfortunately, Street Trends, be careful with the rejoin. That should be just about okay, but unfortunately, Street Trends not having the race that they would have wanted for a lot of their drivers. But we do have Byford actually up in the top three, but for the rest of them, yeah, just went a little bit wide, and getting onto that yellow curb certainly didn't help. I think it was already losing the rear end before that and just going for a spin. And then there's Homer in there just tagging the back. Uh, of the car ahead. Difficult place, but it gets out of the way nicely before the other cars come. Yeah, and then I think it gets weird here. Earl Num just turned uh, a hard left. I think uh, something technical. Wheels? There's, yeah, that was just driving fine. And it's like, you know what? I'm done. If we could get one more look, driving fine, driving good. He just flicked it left. Uh, I mean, unless his screen turned off or something, that's a bit of a weird one. But Aaron after a strong performance, looking fast, is down pit road after that uh, interesting crash. Pedersen also goes around. What is going on today? Is the track made of ice? Certainly looks like it. Cars are going off left, right, and center. Yeah. 
I'm just speechless because, again, no grip. This time it's more so on Wallen. He's out from the top five because you can't cross across the sausage curbing. Disables the floor, disables the grip, disables suspension. Obviously, big boom. All I'm going to say is, imagine if there was no rain on this track. There's already no grip. Is there less than no grip available? I don't think negative grip uh, does exist, but certainly it's, a, it's tricky conditions out there. And I wonder, is it just something to do with the with the track uh, conditions, the track state uh, and the temperatures? Or is there some other reason? Is in the background, Byfeld might be getting up into second place here. He was all over the back of the 94 machine. As we come across there, side by side, in towards the final couple of corners, around the outside it's going to be. And that is a big, brave move that it's going to be. He goes slightly off the track. Can he keep it just about in the track limits, though, enough to avoid a slowdown and take that second position? I think he has. And Byfeld is certainly gaining a few points here in Ericsson. But Ericsson's following him through there in fourth place. So it's only going to be a handful of points, but it might be just enough to get a bit of a swing. We'll have to see into the final couple of rounds. Honestly, I think Byfeld might be in the best position to battle for the win because he's got a two-second head start right now, or Ericsson, and he's been able to put up solid temp and solid pace compared to that. Here's that track temperature, by the way. And you know how wild this is shifting right now when... Forward the temperature to our producer a couple seconds ago, it was 110. When we took green lights for the green flag, it was 106. These most quality skies are causing a lot of craziness. And I think, again, this is something I've noticed since the new weather system. The temperatures for the track itself are a lot more hotter than some people may be used to because, as you may see in real life, the temperatures were about 10 degrees hotter than what they used to be on iRacing iRacing, from what I've noticed, has kind of fixed that, where if it's 74 degrees Fahrenheit like now you've just seen, you'll be in the 110s, for example. Or if you want to be in the 90s like people were used to in this temp in the past, or you'd have to be in the 60 degree range for temperatures. And that is just an extra challenge for the drivers to get on top of, of course, when a, a new build comes out. It always takes some weeks, some months for the drivers to get a feeling. And oh, Pedersen goes around for the second time uh, in this race. Rejoins in front of his teammate, but they avoid contact just about. That is certainly going to be uh, in, the, in, the, in the debrief uh, afterwards. Um, but a uh, disappointing race uh, for them, for sure. As uh, Motin now, oh, he's losing loads of time. He's now got Ericsson all over the back of him. And I think this is going to be an easy P3 there for Ericsson. who will have the run up the hill and should have that position. So reducing the points gap to as low as it could be to his rival, Byfeld, up ahead. Byfeld should have enough to hold on for that position um, against Ericsson, but certainly it's very strong from the drivers starting way down in this inverted race. Byfeld, all he needs is another seven tenths and he can easily make a move on Melvin no matter what time he wants to, in my opinion, because you're talking about a driver six tenths of a second quicker on the average, and Byfeld, it's going to be close a little bit because Byfeld's average is starting to slip back in the past five. But the bigger thing to me is I think Byfeld is going to be on the positive. He's gaining and gaining. He's got the tiny whiff. If he wants the full shot, he needs a half a second this next couple laps. Yeah, he certainly does. Because he, he's just got to get close enough to have uh, have a sniff about it, but I do think he will have the uh, yeah the obviously the ability to do, to do so. We've seen him win a race already this evening, uh, but uh, actually after everything that's happened, I just realised it was the the top three in this race are the top three in the standings as well coming into this evening. Of course, in a slightly different order, in reverse order, in fact, but still. That is uh, pretty crazy how the, the yeah the cream rises to the top and they always seem to find uh, their way towards the front. And that is why they are up there in the championship because this uh, championship with the amount of races that we have, three races every evening, is all about consistency. And this is just another proof of why they are the most consistent drivers. Exactly. And it takes a lot of experience and takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of track time to get to this position. It also takes natural talent, obviously. But in case those wondering by just got that natural talent with what we've seen over the years at this point by i think it's inedible that he takes this race lead here it's just how long does it take to make the move 
And better yet, if it takes more than a couple laps, Jesper Eriksson could straight up steal this. He certainly could. If they start battling, you're right. And there's enough laps to go that Eriksson will certainly catch up if there is uh, too much of a of time loss for this. So it's how much does Orkson want to battle? Because Orkson also knows if he slows him down, then he's helping his teammate in behind potentially get ahead of Marcus Byfeld. So there might be some uh, teammates uh, working together as well for Forza Esports as we come across to lap 10. So five laps remaining in this race. And what is Byfeld going to do for a third time, basically? He's 2v1. Uh, with the Forza Esports drivers. He's really closing in now, though. He's got the speed in the car, and now he's got the draft to overtake. And this probably is going to be a slam dunk move into turn three. But is he, is he going to choose for this time to be the overtake? I think he is. To the left-hand side, he's going to go. He's got the momentum up the hill. Is Orkson going to fight it? Surely he's got to. Not just for himself for the win, but also for his teammate coming in behind. He's closed in by half a second in the last half a lap or so. Up the inside, Orkson's going to hold it. But around the outside, the 105 goes as he retakes the race lead. Nicely done. Right down to a science to make the move. Now... This is the quick response question. How is 086 going to respond back to the draft? We'll have to keep an eye on that in the next lap if there's a bounce back. You know who's doing very solid, though, in the midst of all this? Well, you've just seen one of them. Also trying to make their way through some of all this, too. Solander's still having a good recovery from the crash last time. Same for Christopher Guerreros. He started 33rd in this one otherwise known as last and he's in 10th place that's an amazing uh result there for girls we've seen this so many times this season he always seems to make up a lot of places because one way or another he ends up starting towards the back and manages to avoid those things oh pedazon goes around again is that a third time this race that we've seen at least uh on the uh on the 50, uh, for the 51 machine as he goes around then Horner as well and oh what a stop there from the street train driver just run over his front wing but at least avoids a huge crash Oh, by the way, he's got a black flag for incident points as everybody else, at least somebody joined the party that thinks stage left. Yet, just not having the grip. You already have one driver with a bit of a slow up. You get your front wing ran over and then the car behind and Anton Ullman, who's already been... Is it just me or based on those movements? That's a joystick. Uh... Like, look how quick this is moving. That's not a steering wheel. Unless you're driving with 200 degrees of turning input. Uh, maybe. I'm actually, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe I have to ask the question uh, after the race, but uh, you might be right. And if that is the case, and Antonoma is very, very fast, um, uh, despite potentially that uh, being the case, as uh, we go on to lap 11 of 14, was by felt in the lead. Ericsson trying to chase down. Unless he's coming through turn one. Uh, yeah, potentially. Potentially, we'll have to. Uh, we'll, we'll ask a question uh, in the uh, in in the debrief after with, with Linus. Yeah, I'm curious on that. I haven't noticed that on the oval side, but that would make a lot more sense on why he keeps snapping back. The zero. I'm sorry. In what way do you go from zero to 45 degree angle in half a second, Cam? Well, absolutely, but I do uh, respect a lot of the people who are out there on uh, on gay pants, keyboards, joysticks, whatever it is, uh, to be fast yeah. because it's certainly a lot less control than a steering wheel would have. So to still have the speed and have the tire wear and the tire uh, preservation as well is certainly a, uh, a difficult one to to master just in you know normal steering wheel situations. So uh, fair play yeah. uh, for that as we come back to the battle for the podium. Ericsson is still the same gap behind uh, Byfeld, but that, that of course, therefore means that uh, Ericsson is getting closer to him, so there might be a second position up for grabs for Ericsson in these last two and a half laps. Yeah, Ericsson, if anything, I've noticed keeping an eye on the time is equalized to Byfeld's average pace. He's only a couple one hundreds quicker. Ericsson, first of all, needs to get at least into drafting distance of his teammate. Here's the downside. His teammate can't just be like, okay, I'm going to help you a little bit, see if I can get you a couple more points here. Because if that happens, which apparently is starting to happen based on raw pace for Melvin, that means he doesn't have draft to buy felt, which kind of makes the whole point of being the bridge car mute when you don't have draft to bridge. 
It's, yeah, that's going to be a, a tough one on the final couple of laps for him. But we go back just behind this as Motin, who had the race lead for a long time, is now falling off really. Hasn't had the pace in the second half uh, of this one. And then Holm gets him. Then Holm gets up into that fourth place in towards the penalty corner. Actually, that's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Around the outside he goes, Motin holding it to that inside line and uh, doing enough to, uh, to not lose any further time, really. But does lose that place as Lenholm gets into four. So uh, what's that? Three fours drivers up inside the top four. And look at that four car battle as well uh, for the final uh, well, actually, the final step on the podium. And unfortunately for fourth place, but we've got Moten in behind. We've got Homer and Frisk as they battle their way through two laps to go. Well, we just received word on why Michael Fittison parked his car at that incident early. Some of the drivers with how things have gone today, 15 incident points in two laps is an accomplishment. For Michael Flitteson, based on the luck I've seen him have, though, much of the way, like we've seen with many more, it's almost like a checkbox on what to expect for a major race. Remember, these drivers are supposed to be racing in the Swedish Championships on Monday on this racetrack. And a lot of these drivers are having a fun time practicing, as Timmy says, it's time to park it. Yeah, it's not been the uh, the race that uh, a few of these drivers would have wanted. It's Neptune. Has a huge tank slapper there. The rear goes around, saves it quite nicely. And um, we'll get a few replays here. That's Anton Orman not quite able to hold it as he goes over the yellow sausage curb there. And I will remind you, there's five bonus points for a 0x race in this championship. Five bonus points. That's a lot. Considering it's two for uh, pole position, it's two for fastest lap, but then five for a 0x race. And I'm sure there's not many drivers out there who will be getting those extra bonus points this season. I, I don't think anybody's going to have a 0x unless you're the pace car driver for the white flag at this point. Even that's an incident point. Yeah, surely. Especially around a track like this. Um, you, yeah, I mean, you've got to get one track limit here or there uh, as a minimum per race. It's that style of racing as uh, Bifan, of course, leading in the background. Here's Ericsson going to get past his teammate. Surely they're not going to battle that much, although um, Orkson is actually is fighting that a little bit on the outside line. Ericsson goes up the inside, makes that move for second place, but it is to be expected, to be honest. Uh, Orkson is still fighting for a decent place in the championship, but it is his teammate as the 37 has the inside line. He isn't giving this one up, to be fair, as the 086 on the final lap is trying to go all the way around the outside, but Ericsson should have this, but he doesn't. Orkson holds on, goes a little bit wide, though Ericsson has a bit of a wiggle, and he gets through to second place. And, oh my goodness, that was near contact, though, with the teammate. This made pretty clear they are not afraid to race each other. Who cares about the points? It's about having fun. You're in good boots position. Just don't make contact. Melvin said it's nearly turned up twice. And this is great racing between the teammates. The 37 eventually gets through and is good when it's your teammate because you can trust them a little bit more. But someone who hasn't had any teammates up towards the front is Marcus Byfeld. And he struggled this season. No race victories coming into this round. But tonight, he's going to take two of them as he retakes his championship charge, trying to chase down Jesper Eriksson. And he takes the third and final race victory of the evening here at the Red Bull Ring after a strong reverse grid race there, coming back through the pack to take the victory. It's going to be uh, in behind. Did they actually swap positions in the end? I think Jesper Eriksson might have given that place. I think uh, Orkson... According to my lifetime, he's in second place, but maybe that's just a bit of a bug as they uh, came across the line. Is Ericsson and Orkson finishing out the podium at least. And then Lenholm is in that fourth place uh, with Homer uh, rounding out the top five with another strong result. Homer uh, tonight just quietly there getting his two best race fi uh, finishes this season. Nicely done for Byfeld to say the least. I think the question was not if he'd get a win, obviously, but when. But for the championship as a whole, this is a big start to be able to try and claw back some of the points. That second race of the day, though, is going to be one where I think he's thinking what could have been because of all the time penalties, at least two or three, that cost him a fair amount of points on the table. Certainly did, and the points come at you thick and fast in this championship. But that was certainly an entertaining evening of action with the battles up towards the front. There's a bit of carnage in behind in the midfield showing you how difficult it is to get points in this uh, in this championship. And it was a difficult day for quite a few drivers. But up the front, it was a little bit more easy for Marcus Byfeld. He had to work hard for it. 
um, of course, uh, taking race victory earlier tonight, getting a second one. Yes, Barrickson got one victory, but then also second place in the reverse grid race. He'll be very happy with that one. Orkson, in the end, it was behind his teammate in that third place in Lenholm in fourth. Holmer running out your top five. Moten, he led the race for a while, ended up in P6. Frisk in seven. Giros from the back of the grid. P33 up to P8. What a result from him. And also only, only 23 seconds off. Very, very good indeed. Slander and Holmbom round out your top 10 with Lenholm getting the fastest lap there on lap number nine. Holmer in Allard, Bruce from Fredrickson inside your top 14. Then we've got Kamara, uh, Wallington, Yonker, shot inside your top 18. Then Neptune and Loden rounding out your top 20. Of course, Loden, he was up there towards the beginning of the race, but unfortunately had an incident coming out of turn three and dropped his way down. Bruce from Lundberg, Horner and uh, Ullman inside your top 24. Then is Nylander, Pedersen, Wallin, top 27. And then Nom, uh, Hafliderson and Ericsson joining some of the drivers who unfortunately DNF'd from the race. And then uh, the final uh, three drivers as well. Uh, unsurprisingly to see Crook down there, he had a really, really difficult evening. Crashes in all three races. Olsen and Helmbro rounding up the 33 drivers to attend uh, this round of the championship. And we'll try and, of course, get some words uh, with some of the drivers. So I think uh, we'll bring in, of course, uh, Jesper Eriksson. Jesper, that was uh, an eventful evening once more of action. <laughs> so many crashes happening in and around you, but you managed to avoid them. You got yourself a race victory. You got yourself second in the inverted race. It must have been, uh, yeah, very happy overall. Yeah, I'm delighted. I'm, I'm happy. The first... Uh... First race with the Marcus was just epic. I love racing with him. He's so kind. Races with so much respect and he's such he's such a talent. So much fun. Uh, now the last race, I just try. Me and Melvin had some bad. I just try to take his mind off of racing on just onto food as we talked about lunch tomorrow and stuff. And it worked. <laughs> So yeah, you're trying to put him off. I see. Yeah. <laughs> you might be teammates, but you're still trying to beat him. <laughs> of yes, of course, of course. Uh, I, we went side by side through the fast left-handers and through the second le left-hander. I just heard his car going non-stop on the rev limiter. I just couldn't hold my laugh. <laughs> oh man, I feel so bad for him. But he's such an amazing guy. I just love racing with all them. The whole team too. Love all of them. And all of the sponsors with Xmas Marking and Mob Hebel. It's just, I love everything about this at the moment. Yeah, certainly working out very nicely for you. And I'm sure with the uh, that second place, you can't be too disappointed because you're looking really good when we get to the uh, to the drop scores as well. So how are you feeling going into the final couple of rounds? Six races still to go, um, but uh, it's looking very good, isn't it? Yeah, it's looks super good. Uh, I thought we were nine races, but my math might be wrong because I'm not... Uh, yeah. No, but if it, I'm quite relaxed, quite calm because I know I have the speed on most of the tracks and if I just feel like I'm finishing top five in every race, I think I can kind of have it. So I'm quite quite relaxed at the moment. Let's see until the, the last race of the season. Can, everything can happen. And what would you feel about a pretty much fully wet race at Zandvoort in a couple of weeks' time. I would love it. I absolutely love the rain. I absolutely love Zandvoort, but they combined with rain and Zandvoort, I can't, that's kind of my nightmare, I, I guess, because the dry line is the online, or like when there comes rain, there's no like outside line in most of the corners. Just panic. But that would be fun. Let's do it. <laughs> Leaders. Yeah, let's see what happens in a couple of weeks' time. But congratulations on your victory tonight. Thank you very much, guys. And then next, uh, we'll bring in Melvin Augustin, who came into this evening in third place in the championship, looking very, very strong um, overall. And Melvin, again, a very strong, uh, very strong race. Unfortunately, not a race victory um, at the end there, but uh, certainly your pace was looking good tonight. I'm pretty happy with my performance, uh, apart from the second race where I had an incident. But uh, yeah, very good, uh, very good result for the whole team, actually. So uh, we're pretty happy, I think. And it was uh, pretty close, as you saw with uh, Jesper as well. So it was a very fun race. Yeah, how is this car and the, the battling around this track? It looks like it's great fun. And especially when it was your teammate there on the final couple of laps, mm. you can really have some good trust between each other. 
Yeah, exactly. I was a bit scared uh, for <laughs> for wiping it out in the on the last lap, so I was uh, I was leaving uh, some margins behind uh, between us. Um, but the car is uh, very oversteer, so uh, at least me, I'm pretty like, careful when I'm I'm not diving bombing people uh, left and right. So I'm trying to be extra careful to not wipe anybody out and uh, try to gather those extra few points if you can in each race. It's interesting you mentioned about the oversteer. We saw a lot, a lot of crashes today. A lot of drivers struggling with the car. Uh, was that yeah. just due to the the conditions, uh, the setup, something like that? How how what was making it so tricky today? I think it's a track actually. Uh, when you come down to turn four or five, depending on your counting on the straight there. Um, if you break on the inside, the car like right on the apex, the car like just snaps. Uh, to the right, uh, so you have to correct it, and if you overcorrect it, you, it's easy to crash in the, the guy on the outside. Uh, so I can guess that you saw some incident there, uh, and obviously it's a very fast track uh, with high speed corners, so you got to be very precise and have a good re reaction speed to actually being able to uh, race side by side. Yeah, good stuff. It certainly sounds like a tricky one for the drivers, and yeah, we wish you luck for uh, Zandvoort in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no worries. And lastly, we'll bring in uh, Ivan Lenholm, who had overall a very strong uh, evening of racing. But Ivan, I, I wanted to uh, to ask you, what were you feeling when you were spinning around there in that first race in the first corner? Uh, no, it was not good, of course. Uh, very annoying with myself. I feel very, very annoyed, but uh, the pace was good, but I made some uh, bad mistakes. Uh I could have done much better, but uh, the pace was good, and I did some uh, drives to the front anyways, but uh, it could have been a win, perhaps, so quite annoyed at that. Yeah, your pace certainly looked really good. How did you just sort of calm yourself down and just get back to racing? Because there's one thing is having the uh, the uh, the crash in lap one, but then you've got to you know, be calm. You've got to get back in the mindset of making the overtakes and not making the issue worse. Yeah, of course, you can't uh, give up uh, on the first lap if you spin. You can uh, make up uh, a lot of a lot of positions on this track because uh, when they race, they lose a lot of time and uh, it's quite easy to do a uh, overtake. And uh, when you have the pace, you can't uh, give up. So uh, never give up in racing. Everything can happen. And their leaders can crash. So <laughs> Absolutely. It does happen in this, uh, in this championship. And, and lastly, how do you find these uh, inverted races? Um, when you're starting sort of in the middle of the pack again, there's loads of cars around you. Is that lap one or two very scary? Yes, of course it is. The middle of the pack is the most dangerous uh, on the circuit at the start. Uh, there's cars everywhere, uh, front and behind. So you have to be very careful not to go too fast or too slow because you can. it's very easy to crash. So you have to be very calm and don't uh, you don't win on the first lap. So you have to be a bit careful. Absolutely. You certainly worked out nicely. So congratulations on your results tonight and hopefully maybe sneak a win before the end of the season. Yeah, thank you. And so that concludes the interviews for this uh, round. But of course, we still have two to go in this championship to find out who the champion is going to be. I think we know who's looking to be on the lines, but you never know uh, how the final few races are going to go. Marcus Byfelt is coming back very strong in this championship. We have Circuit Zambor in a couple of weeks time on the 4th of April. Then we have Oran Park. Let's go back down to Australia on the 18th of April to round out uh, this season. Um, but of course, we uh, don't just race uh, on the road course things here. It's Fenske Racing League. And we do go uh, back to the NASCAR Oval Series next week as you go to Richmond for the uh, playoffs. The cutoff race for the round of 15. Ten drivers will remain after that. And that's certainly going to be a lot of fun. The 28th of March, same time, 8 p.m. CT here on Racebot TV. We can't wait to see you there. It's been myself, Cameron Roger, Justin Prince alongside me, and Dane Baird on the production of this Racebot TV broadcast. And we will see you at Circus Van Bort in a couple of weeks' time to see if Marcus Byfeld can chase down Jesper Eriksson for the championship. <laughs>